Ratcliffe is the founder and CEO of chemicals giant Ineos. Despite little being known about the company, they produce the raw materials for goods from bottle tops and toothpaste to computers and cars from 87 manufacturing sites across the world. The company turns over $60 billion and employs 22,000 people in 26 countries. Let's learn a bit more about Ratcliffe and his journey. Ratcliffe was born in 1952 and lived in a small village near Manchester. After moving to Yorkshire, he attended Beverley Grammar School. Despite claiming he only played football at school, Ratcliffe showed early interest in manufacturing, running the school's industrial society, organising tours of paint factories, chemical plants and other manufacturing sites. After deciding to study chemical engineering, he chose the University of Birmingham over Imperial College London due to the fact that he'd never been to London. He graduated with a 2-1 and was offered a permanent job at BP after working there during his summer holidays. However, he was fired after only three days due to a skin condition. He then moved to rival Esso who funded his MBA at the London Business School, a path less followed than it is today. Short stint at a clothing and chemicals manufacturer followed until a call from a headhunter led him to venture capital firm Advent International. They tripled his salary and offered him a fancy company car that was far nicer than the chairman of his previous company. Ratcliffe felt a good opportunity would arise from working in venture capital and did so, moving in 1992. With former business partner John Hollywood, they bought BP's specialist chemicals operation in Kent for £40 million. Advent provided much of the backing. Radcliffe had put it all on the line, mortgaging his house and putting all his money into the deal. According to a colleague, Jim was eager for success and very, very determined. They ran the company for six years and listed it on the stock market in 1994, netting Radcliffe £28 million for his stake. Beck was mainly a high-margin chemicals business, but also owned a cyclical commodity plan whose prices rose and fell with the general cycle of the economy. Ratcliffe quit Inspec in 1998 and raised the £84 million required to buy the asset that Inspec investors did not value. This was the start of Ineos, the company's name that derived from the Latin Ineo, meaning for a new beginning, and Neos, the Greek for something new and innovative. Side business partners Andy Curry and John Rees, he built an empire by acquiring assets cast off by companies such as BP, ICI and other corporate giants. Their strategy was simple buy unfashionable businesses and reduce their costs to make them profitable over the long run. He expected earnings from acquisitions to double within five years. He did not look for synergies between purchases, seeking diversification as a strength. This led to purchases from companies including consumer goods giant Unilever, agrochemical producer Monsanto and oil giant ConocoPhillips as they restructured. As the company grew in size, so did the size of the acquisitions. Between 1998 and 2008, Ineos acquired 22 companies, including the purchase of Innovene, the refining subsidiary of BP in 2005. The $5 billion, $9 billion at the time, propelled Ineos into the big leagues of global chemical companies. Investment banks, Barclays, Merrill Lynch and Morgan Stanley agreed to provide the funding. Ratcliffe gambled the farm, but he did not think it was high risk. The deal gave Ineos 15 production sites globally that produced terephthalatic acid and acetyl products that are used to produce goods from textiles and plastics to pharmaceuticals. During the financial crisis in 2008, Ineos was highly leveraged, causing the banks to move in after the company broke their lending agreement. Overnight, the banks took 804 million euros. Ineos managed to reclaim the money, convincing the banks it should stay in charge and agreed to a restructuring plan. As Ineos struggled to survive, major competitor Lionel Basel filed for bankruptcy. In 2011, the acquisitions continued. Ineos entered into a joint venture with state-owned PetroChina, combining Ineos's French and Scottish refineries with PetroChina's upstream raw materials. Deals continued with Ineos agreeing to buy the Fortis pipeline system in the North Sea from BP in 2017 for $250 million. In 2019, the company invested $2.6 billion into petrochemical production in Belgium. The company also has a number of dragon ships that can transport natural gas from the US to the UK as part of a $1 billion project. Recently, Ineos has agreed to buy BP's petrochemicals business for $5 billion. This will be paid in instalments that will finish in 2021 and in traditional Ineos style is funded mainly by debt. The deal has given Ineos a foothold in Asia and the polyester industry, which is crucial for goods such as drinks bottles and oven-proof trays is a self-proclaimed sports fanatic, running marathons and completing Ironman triathlons despite being 67. He also bankrolls sports teams, including the Ineos Tour de France cycling team, Lusanne FC, Nice FC and sponsors the Mercedes F1 team. He also bankrolled Ayude Kipchoge's record-breaking marathon that took less than two hours. 
He has spent around four hundred million dollars on sporting enterprises that were, and there were rumours of a two million pound bid for Chelsea. However, Ratcliffe was quick to squash them. His sporting purchases have been criticised as a cover-up for his polluting practices, such as fracking and plastic production. Ineos have rejected this, suggesting the purchases are for the love of sport and draws unwanted attention to a company that was the biggest company you've never heard of. Ratcliffe is also building a 4x4 to fill the void left by the iconic Land River defender, codenamed the Grenadier. Radcliffe failed to convince JLR to bring back the original defender, so invested over $600 million in the car that will be manufactured in the UK, creating around 10,000 jobs. He jumped up the plans in a pub in Belgravia and named the project after it. BMW has played an important role in the project, providing the diesel engines that will power the car. The company expects to sell 30 to 40,000 cars a year, and they will start at a price of around £40,000. Ineos has not come without controversy. After the Labour government refused a temporary referral of VAT payments that amounted to £350 million, Ratcliffe moved the HQ to Roll, Switzerland from the UK in 2010. The money saved Ineos millions of pounds, leading to some calling him a tax dodger. These continued in the run-up to the 2019 general election when he tried to move his money to the tax haven if the Labour government increased taxes on the rich in the UK. Ratcliffe returned Ineos to London in 2016 to push for fracking in the UK. He has been critical of UK government rules, highlighting the untapped potential in the north of England. Green protesters were against the idea and the small projects that did go ahead caused minor earthquakes in the surrounding areas. His £130 million yacht gets a lot of media attention. It consumes around 500 litres of diesel an hour when in dock and has been described as a floating palace that is beyond people's wildest dreams. Considering Ratcliffe only founded Ineos 25 years ago, he has successfully built Britain's largest private company and a global player in the chemicals industry. The company has annual sales of $60 billion and is valued at over $30 billion. He may, he may no longer be Britain's richest man with an estimated net worth of around £12 billion and homes in Monaco and Hampshire. Life is pretty good for a boy born on a council estate. If you would like to learn more about Ratcliffe and his journey, I recommend reading his autobiography, The Alchemists, linked in the description down below. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and smashing that like button. Also, drop a comment on what you'd like to see next.